Hey guys, this is Randy with Right Side of the Chart. I wanted to do a quick video and I'll put these charts up uh, on the front page in static format, meaning I'll take screenshots and post these as well. But I wanted to share this with a quick video. It helps to convey my thoughts. Um, and my thoughts are this. Um, obviously, since the first of the year, we've been in what uh, is referred to as a melt-up mode in the market. Um, you know, uh, from what I hear, read, and what I've, I've seen this, this movie before many times, it's, you know, the market's been going up, uh, refused, has refused to go down for quite a while. And it, it, amazing as it is, this late in the game, you get the people that have been out of the market and they decide all of a sudden they need to be in. They're missing this, you know, great roaring freight train. And, and certainly, you know, if, if they haven't been in the market, they, they you know, they have missed a, a, a tremendous run. Um, but valuations are excessive. I posted something the other day that says the P ratio has been is now at the highest level since the 100 years preceding 1998 now they picked 1998 that was the you know where they kicked off the final leg up until the uh, tech bubble one of the uh, the biggest bubble we've ever seen in the stock market um, and so uh, it just shows you that valuations are extreme uh, we're overbought conditions sure the economy is doing fine and, and firing on all cylinders absolutely but that's in my opinion that's reflective of the performance that we've seen over the last few years undoubtedly so uh, either way what happens happens that's fundamental ramblings but let me just go over the technicals here and this is what I wanted to share um, let me get rid of something here I had marker somewhere all right this on a scale of 1 to 10 this setup is close to a 10 uh, but I have to put a caveat in there, you know, in a strong bull market or a strong uptrend like we're in now, bearish chart patterns have a, you know, a, a much higher rate of failure, not playing out. And if they do play out, uh, you get the breakdowns like we had here. There was a breakdown right there of this rising wedge. They tend to not play out for very, uh, very much a very deep correction uh, and often they fall shy of their measured targets you know the measured target for example on a bearish rising wedge you take the widest part of the wedge which you'd have about right here you add that to where the wedge broke down that's a simple but fairly effective measurement so i wanted to say that now with that being said uh, the death of technical analysis is not here. This just happens sometimes. In other words, uh, bullish chart patterns work better in a bull trend. Bearish chart patterns work better in a, when the primary trend is bearish. Um, we haven't had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bullish chart patterns. This is just a market at new highs, grinding higher, a slow grind. So there haven't been a lot of continuation patterns and other things. So I just haven't seen the any objective entries for going long. Obviously. You know, one would have wanted to be long, especially your 401k money and all that. There's nothing even remotely in the charts right now that say, take everything out of your 401k. Uh, valuations are excessive. The market's overbought, but that can continue for quite some time. All right, enough on that. Now let's just look at the charts. So from a pure charting perspective, again, this is one of the best setups I've seen in a long time for at least a pullback trade. Now it doesn't take a lot, you know, it depends on your trading style and I'm not advising that anybody uses leverage if you're not comfortable with it. But when you trade, you know, quick pullbacks, you're going to be in and out. You can usually, uh, on the, when this thing breaks, you could probably get out in the first day. And so what I do uh, you know, I'm, I wear many hats. I'm a trend trader and investor. I have long-term accounts. I uh, don't trade at very actively in those. I'm also a swing trader. I have a trading account. And I and I also wear the hat as a day trader at times where I'll, you know, like, for example, natural gas. I've been day trading quite a bit lately. You get in, get out. Um, and there's been a lot of opportunities there because there's a lot of volatility. And you can make in a single day easily 4 or 5%. Uh, so, also, when you're doing active day trading like that, you don't have overnight risk. Therefore, you can take several times your normal swing trade position size because you don't have the risk of waking up to a large gap, uh, some news event, economic release, earnings report, anything like that. That's the risk that you have when swing trading or investing. They call that overnight risk. And that is eliminated intraday. Sure, we can see some quick rips and dips with high frequency trading, um, but uh, relatively speaking, uh, your surprises and your downsides are all limited, um, especially you know if you're controlling things with stops all right so with that being said here's the setups right now this is the nasdaq 100 um, using the futures because it'll show you the round the clock trading and as you can see here i've i've labeled this you have this these green lines right here and this this is the level i was showing these lines before 
last couple weeks here, uh, last week or two at least. And we had this pretty well-defined uptrend line, a lot of reactions there. We had a breakdown. It was impulsive, met the criteria of, uh, uh, you know, of, uh, of a rising wedge breakdown with that impulsive selling. We had a kickback rally, perfect back test right there where my cursor is, and then we failed. Uh, rolled over. That's what they call a successful back test. We didn't get back above the trend line. We rolled over. However, prices have pushed back up, and that's not that's not uh, unusual at all. It, it happens. And let's take a look at the indicators now. So the bigger picture, if you sort of put that away, uh, and it is relevant again because that's a breakdown of a trend line and just a kickback rally. We're about at those highs now, and we've just eked out. If you look at the dotted line where my crosshairs are, the horizontal line, we've just eked out a new high. So here, here's what I'm looking at now. These blue lines represent another uh, rising wedge pattern. Uh, so once we broke down, we had several reactions here, and I noted you can come back off that same low back here on January 2nd. This is the kickoff of the New Year rally, we'll call it. And uh, we've had several reactions, quite a few. So that validates that trend line. Uh, my book, you have to have at least three reactions to validate a trend line because any two points can be connected at random, but that third reaction, which we had right here, validates it. There's a fourth reaction. Maybe we get some more, maybe not. Um, there is room on this rising wedge for the NASDAQ to kick up a little higher. So what I'm watching is, uh, and I noted down here, these divergences, these negative divergences on this smaller wedge right here, confirm the bearish nature of the rising wedge pattern. Um, you know, you can draw rising wedges on almost any uptrend, but it's the negative divergence that confirms that. That shows you likely trend reversal. So there it is. I mean, that's the facts. I know nobody wants to short this market. It's been extremely difficult. And I'm not looking at a, you know, multi-month swing short here. Just a quick pullback trade. Here's some targets. Um, they're relatively shallow. I'll try to measure it out for you. Depending on where we break down, here was a high recently. Let's just see what kind of correction we're looking at. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, that would be down here, and this is what I've been saying for a while now, uh, about a 2, you know, 2.16, about a 2% drop if we get there, a little bit better than 2%. And again, that's just off today's highs. Uh, if we push higher, it's going to be a little bit more. And the important thing is, if we do push any higher, we need to keep these divergences intact. The RSI divergence, mm, yeah, we can kick up, keep it intact for a little bit. Same with the MACD right here, PPO, if I put that on the chart as well. Uh, so... Uh, uh, but the important thing is this trend line, okay? That trend line goes, I think that will trigger uh, some impulsive selling very quick. If you wait, you know, you wait till the day is over, you'll probably already be down here to T1 uh, is my guess. And again, depending on when it breaks. If it breaks in the afternoon, maybe close to the bell, it might not happen. So that's that. That's the NASDAQ futures. Now let's take a look at the um, S&P 500 futures. And what I really like about these charts, again, uh, I wrote here, any new high soon will be an extension of the previous divergence. Let's get that out of the way. It's cluttering up this chart here. But there it is, just a very clean, bearish rising wedge pattern. These are my favorite patterns. And you can see here, uh, you know, divergences still work. Technical analysis works. As I said, the trend is up. So you're, these corrections are very minor. But if you're trading the ES, you know, the many futures, uh, any, you know, SO, what is it, XPXL, there's several leveraged ETFs out there, um, and you want to do a day trade or a quick trade, uh, you can certainly make uh, a pretty nice profit, and uh, especially on a quick trade, you get in, get out, you know, I'd rather make, uh, you know, 5% on a one or two day trade, uh, do, and sit back, wait another week, do it again next week, there's another 5%, you do that four times a month, there's 20% on, on the month. And again, you're not going to get them all right. Absolutely not. But point is, I call that velocity. When you hit and run, get in, make you know 5%. I'd rather make 5% in a week than have a swing trade that takes two months to make 10 or 12%. Uh, because you get those funds back, you can redeploy them into another trade. So uh, here it is. This is the S&P 500. There's that trend line. And that is what I like. I, and I mentioned this in the video uh, I think I did yesterday. Uh, all these charts are in alignment right now. We haven't seen that in quite a while. So we have these 
pretty well-defined trend lines on the NASDAQ 100. We have it on the uh, S&P 500 we're looking at here. We're looking at a rising wedge. And yes, the S&P, you can see this wedge. I have this line up here right now. Uh, we did have a divergent high at this point. I can move that over. There was a divergent high there. There was a correction, just like we had one here. We had a divergent high there. So far, a correction. And we do have the potential, you know, if, if S&P 500 wants to keep pushing higher, uh, you can see this wedge will continue to form because look at where the MACD is, look where the PPO is, or the RSI. Plenty of room to keep these divergences alive and intact, and I do believe they'll play out. Uh, these two lines are supports. I don't have a target on here. I can give you that. I think we'll come down here probably. Uh, that looks like a pretty good level. Let me give you a line there and tell you what the level is. Uh, in case I don't follow up. These aren't official trade ideas. The trend is too strong. These are counter trend trades. Uh, like most of the trade ideas I've been putting up for a while, the, the unofficial trade ideas have actually done, <laughs> they've done better than a lot of the official trade ideas on balance. Uh, it's been a tough market with a lot of the official trades having our stops barely clipped and then those trades go on to play out to the target they were intended to hit. Uh, so there's a level 2737 we can look at. I think is doable, um, but I think the first stop would be right here, uh, and that is 2767. So there it is. And again, I mentioned this yesterday. Look for a break of both the S&P 500 as well as the NASDAQ 100. Uh, impulsive selling, 60-minute close. You can see a little support zone here. These two lines there, uh, the lower of the two at 2791. If that's taken out, I think it's safe to say the uh, correction has begun. And finally, here's the Dow. Uh, I don't usually talk about the Dow much because it's only 30 stocks. It's not as diversified, but it is an important index. And um, again, just perfect alignment on these charts, these trend lines, same story, negative divergence, rising wedges. These are the patterns I love to trade. Uh, they're very reliable. Uh, so uh, it looks like if one breaks, they're all going to break. And those are solid sell signals. So this is um, one of the best pullback shorting ops. And does it have the potential to morph into something more? Any any trade does, any breakdown does. But uh, right now, let's look at those shallow targets. If you want a, a swing target for the Dow, for your Dow traders, I would say somewhere right around here. I'd give it a, you know, roughly 25, 396 or so. It's a pretty decent support shelf there. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up here. I'll put these charts up in static format as well for you. But uh, that's my thoughts, and um, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens.